hello travel fam welcome back to my channel welcome to another awesome episode of travel vlog so on today's episode i will be taking you on my trip to ghana the places i visited i visited the art and craft market the also art and craft market in the osborne region i visited the independent square where i also climbed to the top of the independent square the black star square that's me there i visited the also castle where the former seat of government was uh, was situated so these are the beautiful places i visited in Hakka ghana and also this is the elmina beach close to the elmina castle i'll be sharing a bit of history of this castle the elmina castle and the also castle they are great historical places for you to visit then a print shop the wooden print shop where i got some very beautiful print material in Accra, so i've said this place i also visited the national museum yes i visited a whole lot of places i started to combine all the video together on this vlog i hope you get to watch to the very end and i hope you get to like and subscribe to this channel for more awesome travel vlog and travel stories thank you
The wood one. This is bone, and this part is made out of our old city contacts. And the last part is this. Yeah. This one and this one are all. How much last price on this one? 20 Which one is 20? I don't like this. I'm 
ladies dress. Okay, fine. This one. Like I said, I'll be giving a short history of the Elmina Castle. So the Elmina Castle was erected by the Portuguese in 1482 and in the present day Elmina, Ghana, formerly the Gold Coast. It was the first trading post built on the Gulf of Guinea and the oldest European building in existence south of the Sahara. It was first established as a trade settlement. The castle later became one of the most important stops on the route of the Atlantic slave trade. The Dutch seized the fort from the Portuguese in 1637 after an unsuccessful attempt in 1596 and took over all of the Portuguese Gold Coast in 1642. The slave trade in this castle continued until the Dutch until the Dutch took over in 1814. In 1872, the Dutch Gold Coast, including the fort, became a possession of Great Britain. The Gold Coast, which is now Ghana, gained its independence in 1957 from Britain and had control of the castle. Elmina Castle is a historical site and was a major filming location for most uh, drama film, especially the Wana Ezoc 987 drama film. The castle is recognized by the castle is recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. It is also a major tourist attraction. By the 17th century, the castle acted as a depot where enslaved Africans were brought in from different kingdoms in West Africa. The Africans often captured in the African interior by the slave catchers of coastal people were sold to Portuguese and later to Dutch traders in exchange for goods such as textiles and horses. In 1596, the Dutch made a first unsuccessful attempt at capturing the castle succeeded, succeeded sorry, by a successful one in 1637 after which it was made the capital of the Dutch Gold Coast. 
During the period of the Dutch control, a new smaller fortress was built on a nearby hill to protect St. George's Castle from inland attacks. The fort was called Fort Cornel Dusburg. The Dutch continued the triangular Atlantic slave route until 1814 when they abolished the slave trade. And in 1872, the British took over the Dutch territory and the fort was to the Anglo Dutch Sumatra Territories Treaties of 1871. For the construction of the castle, the trade between Elmina and Portugal grew throughout the decade following the establishment of the trading post under Gums. In, in 1481, the recently crowned king decided to build a fort on the coast in order to ensure the protection of this trade, which was once again held as a royal monopoly. King Zhao sent all of the materials needed to build the fort on 10 caravans and 2 transport ships. The supplies, which included everything from every foundation stone to roof tiles, were sent in prefitted form along with provisions for 600 men. Upon, however, Azumbuja contacted a Portuguese trader who had lived at Elmina for some time to arrange and interpret an official meeting with the local chief. Azumbuja told the chief of the great advantages in building a fort including protection from the very powerful king of Portugal. During the meeting, Asumbuja and Chief Kwame Ansa both participated in a massive peace ritual that included a feast, musicians, and many participants, both Portuguese and native. When construction began the next morning, the chief reluctance was proved to be well-founded. In order to build the fort in the most defensible position on the peninsula, the Portuguese had to demolish the homes of some of the villagers, who consented only after they had been compensated. The Portuguese also tried to carry a nearby rock that the people of Emina, who were animists, believed to be the home of the god of the nearby river Benya. Prior to the demolition of the quarry and homes, Azumbaja sent a Portuguese, Portuguese crew member with gift to deliver to the chief and other gift in hopes of winning the goodwill of the villagers. In response to this, the local people forged an attack that resulted in several Portuguese deaths. Finally, an understanding was reached but continued opposition to the port led the Portuguese to burn the local village in retaliation. Even in this distant atmosphere, the first story of the tower was completed after only 20 days. This was the result of having bought so much prefabricated building materials. The remainder of the fort and an accompanied church were completed soon afterwards despite resistance. The new fort, signifying the permanent involvement of Europeans in West Africa, had a considerable effect on Africans living on the coast. At the origin of the Portuguese, Elmina declared itself an independent state, whose governor then took control of the town's affairs. The people of Elmina were offered Portuguese protection against attacks from neighboring coastal tribes, with whom the Portuguese had much less genial relations. If any locals attempted to trade with a nation other than Portugal, the Portuguese reacted with aggressive force, often by forming alliances with the betraying nation's enemy. Hostility in between, between groups increased, and the traditional organization of native societies suffered, especially, especially after the Portuguese introduced them to firearms, which made the dominance of the stronger nations easier. Trade with the Europeans helped make certain goods such as clothes and beads more available to the coastal people, but European involvement also disrupted traditional trade routes between coastal people and northern people by cutting out the African middlemen. The population of Elmina swelled with traders from other towns hoping to trade with the Portuguese, 
who gradually established a West Africa monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, we call it Ayo. The Yoruba. And the way we play it is different from the way the evil, the evil people in Nigeria play. They play that with different from the way.
like a village setting.
successful.
the Hosokasa is a substantial fort that was built by Denmark Norway in the 1660s. Thereafter, the fort changed ownership between Denmark Norway, Portugal, the Akwamo, Britain, and finally post independence Ghana. Under Denmark Norway control, it was the capital of the Danish Gold Coast and held and dispatched enslaved people overseas. In 1902, Castle became the seat of government in Ghana, but this has now moved to the Golden Jubilee House. The area was first occupied in 1550 by the Portuguese, though in the 17th century, Portuguese influence diminished. The area came under the control of Sweden in the 1650s, led by the German trader Henry Karloff. In 1652, he was given permission to build a small fortified lodge by the king of Akka, with whom he had previously done business. In 1660, control passed to the Netherlands, but it was soon lost to Denmark Norway. In 1657, Karloff had again traveled to Africa, this time representing Denmark Norway. He aimed to conquer the fort he had previously established, which he found easier at Usu. In its early life, the castle was primarily used in the gold and ivory trade, but under Dano Norwegian control, it increasingly, increasingly dealt with slaves. In 1850, the British bought all of Denmark Gold Coast possession for £30,000 including Fort Christenburg. Denmark had been considering selling this outpost for some time. After the slave trade had been abolished, they were expensive to run and brought little benefit. Britain experienced the same problems but was keen to prevent illegal slave trading and France or Belgium threatening in the area. An earthquake in 1862 destroyed most of the upper floors which were rebuilt in wood. Later that century, the castle became the seat of the colonial government. It was abandoned by the British colonial powers from 1890 to 1901. Within this period, it was used as a constabulary mess and later a psychiatric asylum. It became the seat of government again in 1902. In 1950, the wooden upper floors were rebuilt according to the original Danish plans. In 1857, when Ghana became independent, with Queen Elizabeth II as head of state, the fort became government house. The residence of the Governor General, when Ghana became a republic in 1960, it became the residence of Ghana's first president, Kwame Nkoma. In 2005, there was debate over whether Oso Castle should be replaced as the seat of government. President John Kufo argued that his government should not sit at the castle due to its previous association with slavery and also because its facilities were inadequate. The National Democratic Congress MPs, MPS, however, argued that the £50 meter that a new presidential palace would cost would be better spent elsewhere. Though the Osu Castle is no longer the seat of government, the seat of government is now the Jubilee House. The name is now gasseted after being changed from its former name the Flagstaff House. Many international dignities have visited the castle while in the region, including US President Richard Nixon, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, and German Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder. Additional rooms were built in order to accommodate Queen Elizabeth II's Elizabeth visit in 1961, one year after Ghana became a republic. The present castle is made up of various extensions to the original 
and is thus in an unorthodox shape. It has many facilities for the use of the employees, including a clinic, cafe, shopping center, and a post office. It also still accommodates a permanent garrison. The extensive gardens feature a wide variety of plants, both local and important, and employ 30 people. They are used for the president's outdoor reception and parties. The castle is close to work in visitors.
and that's it travel fam on today's episode of travel vlog i hope you enjoyed the videos i hope you enjoyed the voiceover with the history i told of the two castles i hope you enjoyed the uh, places i showed and i hope you were able to gain one or two places that you would like to visit when you're in Hakka, ghana thank you please like share and subscribe to this channel in case it's your first time on this channel and if you are a returning subscriber thank you for always being here i hope you enjoyed the vlog bye see you on another episode of travel vlog Thank you.